phonic cell. Phonic cell or voltaic cell is also known as electrochemical cell. In this cell, there is a process of chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. The cell consists of two half cell joined by a salt bridge. Half cell on the left consists of zinc sulfate solution with zinc electrode and on the right the half cell consists of copper sulfate solution with copper electrode. These two electrodes are connected with wires to the voltmeter. A voltmeter is used to detect the voltage generated by this galvanic cell because we know that chemical energy converted to electrical energy so the voltage is generated can be read by voltmeter at zinc electrode on the left so this is half cell containing zinc sulfate zinc electrode copper sulfate solution with copper electrode so on the left side we focus on the zinc electrode here Zinc is more electropositive than copper. If we refer to standard reduction potential table, the zinc is more electropositive than copper. Means it is easier to release electron compared to copper. So zinc has more tendency to release electrons. Zinc is a negative electrode since it is a source of electron because the zinc sulfate here, the zinc here has more tendency to release electron so this zinc will release electron to become zinc ion so this zinc electrode becomes the negative electrode since it is a source of electrons the zinc metal the electrode zinc metal here dissolves and the mass of zinc electrode decreases. So the zinc here dissolves to produce zinc ion and release electron. Thus oxidation occurs. Here oxidation occurs. Zinc ion enters zinc sulfate solution. So at the anode, at this electrode, the zinc solid or the zinc electrode dissolves to become zinc ion and two electrons are released. At the copper electrode, focus on the right side, copper electrode, here is our copper electrode. Copper metal immersed in a copper ion electrolyte. So our electrolyte here, the solution, copper sulfate solution, we call it copper electrolyte. This copper electrode, copper metal, immersed in the copper solution. The electrons from the zinc metal, we know that this zinc electrode release two electrons. The electrons flows from here, from zinc electrode, moves through the wire and enter the copper metal. The copper ion from the solution, here we have Cu2 plus copper ion in the solution, accept the electrons. It accept the electrons from zinc, causes reduction to occur. We know that reduction is accepting electron. So copper is the positive electrode. This copper, positive electrode because it accept electrons. So copper is deposited at the copper electrode. So the copper ion here accepts electrons. It becomes copper metal. So copper is deposited at this electrode. So the mass of copper electrode increases because the copper ion in the electrolyte keep becoming copper solid. It will deposit it around this electrode. The solid will deposit it around this electrode, and the mass of copper electrode will increase. So here at the cathode, because this is positive electrode, we call it cathode. At the cathode, the copper ion in the copper sulfate electrolyte 
will accept two electrons from the zinc to become copper solid. Salt bridge can be made from a strip of filter paper soaked in a salt solution or inverted YouTube. This is inverted YouTube, or it can be made from a strip of filter paper soaked in a salt solution and plug at both ends with cotton or glass wool. Electrolyte used in the salt bridge, the solution used in the salt bridge must not react with electrodes or solutions in the half cell. So the solution in the salt bridge here must not react with the electrolyte in both half cells. The function of the salt bridge is to prevent two half cell, this two half cell from mixing together and it is to maintain the electrical neutrality of the cell. Here, we can see that zinc ion enter the solution. Zinc ion enter the solution because the zinc electrode release two electrons and the zinc ion enter the zinc solution here causing an overall excess of positive charge. So you will have more and more zinc ion in the electrolyte. That is excess of zinc ion. So here, let's say we use the salt bridge consists of KCl salt. We use KCl salt in the salt bridge and then the Cl ion from the salt bridge will move into the zinc half cell to neutralize the excess positive charge by the zinc. That is the function of the salt bridge. And then here, the copper ions, the copper ions here leave the solution. This copper ion will accept two electrons from the zinc. We know that two electrons flow from the zinc through the wire and copper ion will accept two electrons. This copper ion in copper sulfate will accept two electrons. It will leave the solution causing the excess of SO42 minus, causing the excess of sulfate ion. So excess of negative ion. Here in the salt bridge, we have K plus and Cr minus. So the potassium, the K plus potassium ion from the salt bridge will move into the copper half cell to neutralize the excess negative charge. The negative charge in excess is sulfate ion SO42 minus. K plus will neutralize the SO42 minus at the copper half cell. That's what happened in the cathode or the right cell. If there is no salt bridge, there will be no movement or no neutralization of ions in both half cell. As the zinc root dissolves, the concentration of Zn2 plus in the left beaker increases because we know that this zinc metal will become zinc ion because the zinc metal will release electron and it will become zinc ion. So zinc ion in the left beaker increases. If you have excess ion, excess positive ion on the left cell, the reaction will stop because the net increase in positive charge is not neutralized. If there is no salt bridge, there is no neutralization of the excess ion, so the reaction will stop. Cell notation. This double line, vertical double line, represent the salt bridge. Means if this is the salt bridge, this is in the middle. So on the left, on the left cell notation, is anode and on the right cell notation is a cathode. The single vertical line represent phase boundary means this one iodine ion aqueous here is iodine solid so the single 
vertical line represent different face here different face so this is the face boundary between different face or different state of matter so you have to put single vertical line and then the coma use coma for components that are in the same phase for example here in the cathode there are manganese ion and mn2 plus ion so both ions here both cation and anion here are in aqueous state so if they are in the same state or the same phase use coma between them electrodes appear at the far right and left of notation so far right here graphite means this cathode use graphite electrode and the far left here is electrode this anode use graphite electrode and make sure you don't include stoichiometry in the cell notation so don't ever put two more i minus or two more i2 or three more don't include stoichiometry in the cell notation at all electrode potential or you can use the symbol e half cell electrode potential is a measure of the ability of a half cell to attract electrons towards it so we want to measure the tendency or ability of the half cell to attract electron towards it that is electrode potential the magnitude of electrode potential depends on the tendency of the metal or non-metal to lose electrons so the electron flows from the anode here on the left side negative electrode anode electron flows from the anode to the cathode because there is a difference in electrical potential energy between these two electrodes if there is no difference in electrical potential if there is no difference there will be no electron flow the electron will flow only if there is a difference in electrical potential energy between these two electrodes on the left and on the right standard reduction potential however it is impossible to measure the absolute value of an electrode potential directly so if we were to measure one only one half cell it is impossible to measure the absolute value of the electrode potential directly therefore we use the standard hydrogen electrode or she as a standard reference to measure the electrode potential of other half cell standard hydrogen electrode she platinum electrode immersed in one molar aqueous solution of strong acid h plus aqueous or h3o plus aqueous so this is platinum electrode immersed here in one molar of acid solution through which hydrogen gas at one atmospheric pressure is bubbled so the hydrogen gas at one atmospheric pressure is inserted into this platinum electrode this SHE is used as a standard reference to measure the electrode potential of other half cells so for example here we have half cell of zinc electrode immersed in zinc sulfate electrolyte so to measure this electrode potential of this half cell of zinc electrode and zinc sulfate electrolyte we use standard hydrogen electrode this is because the standard electrode potential voltage is zero voltage so this is the reading so when the SHE reading is zero voltage the reading that the voltmeter show will be the reading of the half cell of zinc sulfate electrolyte with zinc electrode
cell equation will be so on the left on the four left is the electrode so we start with zinc solid and then the electrolyte there in there zinc 2 plus aqs 1 molar and here we put the single line because phase boundary between solid and aqs and aqs and the molarity the concentration you put the coma and then this double vertic double line vertical is for the salt bridge salt bridge and then on the right side is the cathode so the cathode platinum on the far right is the cathode so platinum solid and then one single line for the phase boundary between gas and solid and then here single line between gas and aqueous whatever in the anode you write here but put the single line to differentiate between different phase boundaries so here is aqueous coma concentration gas coma the pressure and then the half cell equation will be anode on the left side anode which the oxidation process occurred the zinc sulfate zinc sulfate will release two electrons to become zinc ion aqs plus two electron here two electron is released and then at the cathode reduction process occurred so the hydrogen ion two hydrogen ion will accept two electrons to become h2 gas overall cancel out the electron on the reactant and on the product and whatever in the reactant you write as the reactant zinc solid plus 2 h plus aqs and write all the product on the right side so zn2 plus aqs plus h2 gas so this is the overall equation we can calculate the standard reduction potential of the half cell by using the equation e naught cell equals to e naught cathode minus e naught anode so this reading our cathode is the hydrogen and our anode is the zinc so we know that the reading for standard electrode potential of the SHE is zero here standard electrode potential of SHE is zero and zinc refer to the standard reduction potential table it is 0 0.76 volt or you substitute the E naught cell the reading by the voltage is the E naught cell equals to the SHE reading minus E naught zinc so you will get the E naught zinc equal to negative 0 0.76 voltage this is the standard reduction potential table so in this table you have each half reaction written as reduction so all this half reaction equation is written in reduction form so all except electron and there are the products each half cell equation is written as a reduction changing the stoichiometry coefficient of a half cell reaction will not change the value of e naught in the standard reduction potential table even if you put a different stoichiometry put two more reacts with three more or four more and it will not change the value of e naught at all more positive e naught value so the one more positive is the one above the more positive the e naught value the higher the tendency for reduction mean it prefers to undergo reduction reaction mean it prefers to accept electron the higher the tendency for reduction it's more positive of the e naught value it will undergo reduction reaction so that will be at the cathode 
if more negative of the E0 mean at the bottom here, the reading more negative, the E0 value, the higher the tendency for that chemical equation to be oxidation reaction or it will be at the anode. Here we have Ni2 plus Cu2 plus Ag plus and different E0 value. So if you look at here, the most positive value is silver and the most negative value is nickel. So all values are relative to the SHE. If we measure with SHE, all this value you will get. If the value of E0 is more positive, for example here, the most positive is silver, reduction is favored. Mean this is the strongest oxidizing agent. Reduction, oxidizing agent. And if the value of E0 is more negative, here the most negative is nickel. So the oxidation will favor means this will release electron. Silver prefer to accept electron. Nickel prefer to release electron. So here, if more negative oxidation is favored, means the strongest reducing agent. Here, the comparison between standard electro potential or standard reduction potential with standard cell potential, also known as electromotive force, EMF. So the standard word here, because we undergo the process under standard condition, which is the temperature is 298 Kelvin. The pressure is 1 atmospheric pressure and the concentration is 1 mole per decimeter cube or 1 molar concentration. The standard electro potential or standard reduction potential contains only one active half cell. Another half cell will be inactive. The potential difference between electrolyte and electrode on one active half cell. Standard electrode potential only measure potential difference between electrolyte and electrode of one active half cell. Whereas standard cell potential contains two half cell. Standard electrode potential only one active. But standard cell potential two active half cell Potential difference measured between two active electrodes and electrolyte. That's the difference between standard cell potential and standard electrode potential. So, how to calculate the standard cell potential? We know previously to calculate the standard electrode potential, we use SHE. Standard electrode potential, only one active electrode half cell one active electrode in half cell so here we use SHE in standard electrode potential but to calculate standard cell potential which consists of two active electrodes this is how we calculate standard cell potential a voltaic cell houses reaction between aqueous bromine and zinc metal so here we have bromine and zinc and then given cell potential E cell equals 1.83 volt. Calculate E bromine given E zinc equal negative 0.76 volt. So we use this equation E naught cell equals E naught cathode minus E naught anode. Here we have E cell given E zinc negative 0.76 so write down the half cell equation cathode br2 accepts two electrons to become br minus and then anode zinc becomes zinc 2 plus plus two electron we know that zinc will become zinc 2 plus and bromine it will accept electron to become br minus so that's why the zinc is at the anode, the bromine is at the cathode. And then 
Write down overall why you cancel out the electron involved. Write down the overall equation and that is the E0 cell given 1.83 volt. And then we use the equation E0 cell equals to E0 cathode minus E0 anode. We want to find out the E0 cathode because at the cathode we have the bromine. Here the question asks for calculate the E bromine. Substitute E0 zinc, we have the E0 zinc which is E0 anode because zinc is at the anode because zinc undergo oxidation. So the E0 bromine is equal to 1.07 volt by substituting the E0 cell value 1.83. This example, predict what will happen to Br2 if it is added to a solution containing Cl- and I minus at 25 degrees Celsius. Assume all species are in their standard states. Here, initially, we have a solution containing Cl minus and I minus. Write down the half equation for both Cl minus and I minus and the E naught value for both. So, initially, we have the Cl minus or E naught chlorine has more positive voltage and E0 iodine has more negative volt. So more positive, we know that this is reduction and more negative, it will undergo oxidation. This is before we add the bromine. And then after we add the bromine, here we have the bromine initially we have here oxidation and then reduction Cl. And then when we add the bromine, bromine if we compare with this one, it is for I minus, I minus maintain the most negative value voltage. So most negative voltage it maintains as oxidation. And this bromine will undergo reduction. And the Cl minus is more positive than the I minus, it will also undergo reduction. So bromine will react with I minus, it will oxidize I minus, but will not oxidize Cl minus. It will not oxidize Cl minus. So here, what happened to bromine? So bromine will undergo reduction. It will be the cathode because the most negative here is I minus. It will be the anode. Spontaneous and non-spontaneous reaction. If the value of E0 cell is more than zero, means the positive value, it is spontaneous cell reaction. If the E0 cell is less than zero or negative value, it is non-spontaneous cell reaction. If the reaction is at equilibrium, the E0 cell is equal to zero. For example, predict whether the following reactions occur spontaneously. So we have to look at the E0 cell value, whether it's positive or negative or zero. So first, this is the equation, and then given the E0 cell for each silver and bromine. So here for silver 0.8 volt, for bromine 1.07 volt. We know that E0 cell equals to E0 cathode minus E0 anode. And then, so for the cathode, it is more positive value. So more positive value is bromine and not more negative value. More negative value is silver. So bromine more positive value here. Cathode 1.07 we put here 1.07 minus E0 anode the silver 0.8 volt. Okay, when you do the half equation, oxidation and reduction equation, you will get the anode because here it is oxidation, reduction is cathode. So more positive value, cathode, more negative value, anode. 
So just substitute the value and you'll get 0 0.27 volt and this is a positive it is more than zero or it is positive value the reaction is spontaneous